Hi, I'm William Spaniel. Let's learn some game theory. Today's topic is drug testing in the Olympics. So the background here is something like this. Athletes and sports organizations like the Olympics, which is going on right now at the time that I filmed this video, have competing preferences when it comes to enhancing drugs or performance enhancing drugs. Athletes, or at least the bad athletes, would like to take the drugs and not get caught. But the organizations, in an effort to promote fairness and all sorts of good things and good feelings like that, uh, would like athletes not to take drugs and want to catch them when they do. So the situation we're going to put them in is something like this. Two strategies are out there for each player. The player can dope or the athlete can dope or not dope. And the sports organization can either test or not test. The payoffs are going to be as follows. If the athlete does not dope, he earns zero. So there aren't going to be any false positives in this model. We're going to do away with those. If the athlete dopes, on the other hand, things are a little bit more complicated. He gets a 1 if he tests negative or if he's not tested at all, and he gets negative 1 if he tests positive. So this means he really wants to take the drugs and test negative if he gets tested and really doesn't want to get caught, and not doping is just some sort of a, a middle outcome. And we're going to assume that the test is correct with probability P. So that means if I were tested for drugs, if I took a performance-hancing performance -hancing drug and I get tested for it, then I only come up as a positive positive with probability p, which means 1 minus p of the time I get away with it. Now, if you convert what I have on this slide into a payoff matrix, this is what it looks like for the player. You can pause the video and do this for yourself if you want to. I'm not going to waste the time. Just trust me that this is correct. Now, to fill out the the league's payoffs, we're going to do this. So the athlete or the league's payoffs are going to be a little bit more complicated here. The league earns one if the athlete does not dope, and or if the the athlete dopes and tests positive. So the goal for this organization is to get the athlete not to dope, and if he does dope, then at least catch him when he does. So if that happens, he gets one, or the the league gets one, and if the athlete dopes and the league fails to catch him, it earns negative one. So it's really bad for the league if the league doesn't test the player who takes the drugs or misses the player who does when it does take the test and the test fails because remember the test isn't perfect here and of course testing is going to cost some cost and we're just going to call it c and the c is going to be some positive amount so filling out that slide's worth of information into the payoff matrix you get that right there and the question i want to pose to you in this video is this assume that the cost to test is fairly cheap and tests don't completely suck. And those are just the requirements right there. This is just essentially assuring that neither player has a strictly dominant strategy. The question is, does the league test more or less frequently as the quality of the test, or as P, increases? So there's arguments to go both ways here. The protesting argument looks like something like this. Since tests are more accurate, you will be better able to catch cheaters per the cost of a test. So that would make you want to test more frequently. So as the quality of the tests increase, you test more frequently. The anti-testing argument would be something like this. Since tests are more accurate, athletes are going to be more scared of them, and that will make them want to dope less, which makes drugs, drug tests actually less necessary because the athletes are less willing to take those drugs. So at this point, I would like you to pause the video, go to the YouTube comments, and if you think testing will be more frequent as the quality of the test increase, write more frequent and press enter. And if you think the testing will be less frequent, write less frequent and post that comment. So please think about this and do that now. And once you have done that, we will answer the question. Okay. So game theory is really awesome because it allows us to get past these these arguments here. We could spend all day debating these things and not really get anywhere, but with the game theory, we can actually show which one of these is actually true, which one of those arguments is what actually should happen. So when we solve this game, if we have those assumptions that the quality of the test is at least decent and the costs aren't really horrible, then we have a payoff matrix that looks like this, and we have best responses as marked. So Basically what this is showing here, again, I'm not going to go through the full proof, is that there is no pure strategy Nash equilibrium, and it actually takes the form of something that looks very close to matching pennies, where it's a guessing game, where the athlete wants to dope if the league isn't going to test, but the league, if the athlete knows that he's not going to dope, will want to not test, and if the league is not testing, then the athlete's going to want to dope, and so forth, and you just you get in, caught into a loop here that ensures that there's not going to be any pure strategy Nash equilibrium. But that's fine. We can just solve for the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium. And remember that we're interested here in knowing whether the league tests more or less frequently 
given a P or as P increases. So what that means we need to do is we need to solve for the league's mixed strategy in the mixed strategy Nash equilibrium to be able to answer that question. So to solve for that, what we need to do is we need to ask ourselves what the expected utility for the athlete is for doping, what the expected utility for the athlete is for not doping, set those two expected utilities equal to each other, and solve for the mixed strategy, and that will give us the league's mixed strategy. So to start out with the first part, we have to ask ourselves what is the expected utility of doping, and that's just a function of some mixed strategy of the leagues, which is sigma test, which represents the probability that the league tests for drugs. So if the league is testing with probability sigma test, then that percentage of the time, the athlete gets one minus two P, this payoff right here. And then the rest of the time, or one minus this probability, the athlete will get one, which is this payoff right here. And if you write that out as an equation here, you get the probability that the league tests times this payoff, plus one minus the probability that the league tests, or the probability that the league doesn't test, times this one. So that's how you get that equation right there. Now, the second part is to ask ourselves what the expected utility is for the player for not doping. And that's pretty simple because regardless of what the, the league does here, the player gets zero. So the athlete's always getting zero regardless of the league's strategy. So that means the expected utility for not doping is simply going to be zero. Now, remember that the last part of this, the last step, is to set these two expected utilities equal to each other, this expected utility and this expected utility equal to each other, and solve for sigma. So that is the equations from before. So this is the expected utility for doping. That's the expected utility for not doping. And remember, we're setting them equal to each other. And so if we set this equal to this, you get this line. And doing a little bit of simplifying, you get to there. And doing a little bit more simplifying, you eventually get to sigma test is equal to 1 over 2p. And to answer our question, remember our question is, does the probability of testing increase or decrease as the probability of successful tests increase? So the quality of the test is measured by this P right here. What happens when the quality of that test increases? Well, this, this, uh, this probability right here for sigma test is decreasing in P. As P gets larger, this probability gets smaller. You test less frequently as the quality of the test increases. That's all this is showing right here. And so the winner is the anti-testing argument. Since tests are more accurate, athletes will be less or be more scared of them and that will make them want to dope less, which makes drug tests less necessary. So that was the correct answer. One other thing before I go is that you'll note that the probability that the league tests is surprisingly not dependent on the cost of the test. The cost of the test is actually strategically irrelevant to the league's mixed strategy in this case, which is something that's a little uh, neat as well and probably unexpected. So I thought that that was a little uh, pretty neat model to, to go over and uh, pretty timely given the Olympics are going on right now. So I hope you enjoyed this and I will see you next time. Take care.